Japan has become the fifth country to put a spacecraft on the moon, but power issues are threatening to cut the mission short. Japan's smart lander for investigating moon landed at 12.20 a.m. local time, but the probe's solar panels were not able to generate electricity. On January 19th of this year, something seemingly impossible finally happened. It became a turning point for space exploration when Japan's moon sniper mission finally achieved a soft landing on the moon's surface. But just when we thought the intrigue was over, the world was stormed with a shocking discovery that petrified scientists, including Michio Kaku, a renowned physicist. What did they discover on the lunar surface? Why are Michio Kaku and other scientists panicking on behalf of the world? Join us as we explore the terrifying realities of what Japan saw on the moon. When the groundbreaking event of January 19, 2024 happened on the moon, it wasn't just another normal space exploration. Instead, history was made as Japan soon became the fifth country ever to have a soft landing on the moon. 55 years after the first moon landing, Japan has made history with its rover Moon Snipe. It's become the fifth country to successfully land on the lunar surface. Utilizing cutting-edge technology and skills in space exploration, this expenditure, identified as the SLIM mission, was indeed a breakthrough not just for Japan, but for the world at large. Here, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, was the champion to behold working together successfully to make the spacecraft regarded as a slim probe to touch down on the moon. But this was no easy feat, taking us back to the year 2005, a period where the vision was born that would change all that we know forever. This was the time when JAXA began to build a small satellite that would be used to conduct experiments on the moon. But starting from here, the slim project grew more extensive, growing into something massive and later became part of the International Space Station goal in 2013. However, something more massive was brooding. In April 2016, the project soon became identified as the JAXA mission, and Mitsubishi was given the contract to build the probe. But why was the SLIM project such a big deal? According to Michio Kaku, the project was exciting. It aimed at creating an advanced landing technology that champions precision and ease. For JAXA, SLIM had successfully achieved this after an intense creation process of four months. While SLIM is undoubtedly a massive accomplishment for Japan, it is also costly, costing up to 18 billion yen, which is $120 million for its construction. It weighed about 200 kilograms, but soon amounted to about 700 kilograms after fueling. Apart from the probe itself, its two rovers, the lunar excursion vehicles, are also said to be a substantial financial feat, while its second rover, LVE-2 or SORC, is said to be the most miniature rover in existence, being about 0.25 kilograms, it also plays a crucial role in the mission as a whole. Created by JAXA, Sony, Tomy, and Doshisha University combined, SORA is said to imbibe mixed elements of toy technology alongside sensor robotics and space expertise from JAXA enabling it to work independently and adapt to the lunar environment. According to Sinichiro Sakai, the project manager for SLIM, despite all these fantastic features, it is a massive success as it demonstrates the capabilities to not just land safely anywhere, but at the desired location, making it a huge success that encouraged future gigantic aspirations of Japan. Because of SLIM's success, Japan can now venture into future lunar missions with confidence covering the unexplored territories of the lunar surface, including the moon's far side. It is indeed a massive achievement for Japan's space exploration. While many people applaud Japan for its outstanding successes, some questions arise. Was the SLIM mission only aimed at creating an advanced technology for soft landings on mass, or also an avenue to tap into the power from space? Hitoshi Kuninaka is the head of the agency's research center. And since we are not able to generate electricity, and so the operation is being done using batteries on load. When the time came for the SLIM mission to be launched, it wasn't launched alone, but tagged alongside the gray imaging and spectroscopy mission PRISM. Halfway down the line, however, they soon separated, going on different trajectories as SLIM approached the lunar atmosphere. 
On December 25th, it finally made a grand entry into the moon, which soon became a defining historical moment. Thanks to the newly imbibed cutting-edge technology and good planning, Slim amazed all when it made one of the smoothest ever landings on the moon. Thanks to all of this, the reason for Slim's invention was accomplished. Indeed, the Slim mission has become a frontliner in utilizing a new technology that aids immense precision, displaying that so much is possible for the future. As technological advancement continues, scientists seek better ways to do things. For example, space agencies like NASA, who are usually content with spacecraft landing on any place on the moon, are no longer content with that. These space agencies are now focused on aircraft landing with precision in designated locations. This was a goal that was thought to be a massive one. Still, JAXA finally achieved it in January, leaving the world amazed. However, while SLIM's landing was a huge success, it had challenges. But what are they? According to Michio Kaku, something terrifying happened on the day SLIM landed on the moon's surface, leaving scientists terrified. Michio explained that as the probe descended, it experienced a glitch in one of its engines. That was an event that posed a doom to the mission as a whole. Because of the glitch, the probe quickly decreased thrust, surprising everyone. The spacecraft was about 50 meters high when the problem started, leaving scientists turning their heads in panic. As a responding action by craft guidance and control systems, SLIM was made to continue its trajectory to the moon. Still, this time with a reduced propelling force, determined to save the mission. According to Michio Kaku, the mission engineer diagnosed from their analysis that the engine malfunction was probably due to the engine nozzles. As they continued to look into the problem, the issue with SLIM was later concluded to be a valve problem or fuel mixture. This had prompted an asymmetry, which meant nothing other than an off-balance descent profile. The result was a deviation from SLIM's initially set landing trajectory, which was a problem. So how did SLIM manage to be a success after this? As it turned out, even at the distressing point when it seemed like all would fail, SLIM's onboard system thankfully adapted to the now reduced thrust. SLIM's orientation was soon adjusted using its space guidance and control system, which helped the craft maintain its trajectory toward the moon's surface. The successful trip was in view again, but there were a few more hurdles to surmount. Thankfully, SLIM could land on the moon's surface, but did so a bit off the desired target, tumbling when it touched down. Here, JAXA soon took satellite imagery from sources like the NASA Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter to monitor the situation, showing that SLIM didn't have a smooth landing. SLIM's had not only landed a bit off trajectories, but its solar panels also faced westward which needed to be fixed and improved for its power generation and mission operations. It could not recharge because its panels were not aligned with the sun. Following this, JAXA resolved to utilize SLIM backup batteries and was able to send two of its rovers to investigate this lunar region. The solar panels on the lander were at an angle that could not efficiently receive sunlight and it took the lander nine days to recharge its batteries and establish communication. Its two rovers, the lunar excursion vehicles, possessed unique features. For instance, the first rover, also known as LVE-1, looks and moves like a frog, hopping for movement. Rover 2, or LVE-2, boasts the smallest ever made rover taking the looks of a minor baseball transforming into a wheel cam to explore the lunar surface. Despite all the chaos and waiting that unfolded with the SLIM mission, LVE-1 was thankfully able to establish communication with the ground station, receiving a radio signal from LVE-2 displaying great adaptability and functionality. While LVE-1 captured no images, LVE-2, also known as SORC, could capture images and SLIM pictures on the moon. Its multi-band spectroscopic cameras could also take snaps, providing valuable information about the lunar atmosphere and site. After working for a while, JAXA soon decided to deactivate SLIM and wait for the sun's angle to change to favor SLIM's charging. But this, I also demanded patience, as it would take up to 14 days on Earth, making a long stretch between sunlight and dark periods on the moon. Finally, the lunar day ended on January 31, 2024, and SLIM's panel would soon be realigned with the sun. 
Slim began to receive power again and auto resumed its operations. Following this, communication was re-established, and JAXA shared their excitement about their social media named XPage. Following the operation's resumption, the lander captured new images, including pictures of a nearby close-up rock, which they later named Toy Poodle. Another picture includes a patchwork view of the moon's surface, displaying various rock sizes. JAXA gave some of these rocks nicknames, including Shop Dog, Pomeranium, and Shisu, making a fun part of the mission. These pictures were not just for fun, but provided insight into the diverse terrain on the moon around the Shioli crater. The mission was indeed successful, sharing insightful information on the precise location and conditions of the region where SLIM landed. But why is SLIM's success such a big deal? Now, SLIM's success is invaluable, seeing that there are not many records of successful missions to the moon. Instead, several attempts aimed at exploring the moon have mostly failed or fatally crashed in the wrong locations. For instance, one outstanding example of a recent failed mission to the moon is Peregrine, a lunar lander that instead of reaching the moon had broken apart in the Earth's atmosphere due to a sad post-launch malfunction. The lander, built by a Pittsburgh-based company known as Astrobotic, was aimed at being the first commercial spacecraft to land softly on the moon's surface. Interestingly, Peregrine flew as part of NASA's lunar payload Lunar Services CLPS initiative which was supportive of private companies to create and run their lunar landers for the transportation of NASA equipment to the moon. Thus, Peregrine began its flight early on January 8, 2024, launched successfully on the flight of the United Launch Alliance Vulcan Centaur rocket, carrying about six NASA instruments, a variety of payloads, a lunar library archive, human remains, and lunar rovers. Everything went smoothly until shortly after the lander separated from its launch vehicle. Suddenly, fuel began to leak, causing some damage to the propulsion system. According to Astrobotic, the lander had developed a valve problem, which caused high-pressure helium to flood the fuel tank and cause it to rupture. Soon after this, the lander's propellant suddenly started piercing into space like a shocked rocket. This was a brooding disaster, as it could lead to a dangerous, uncontrollable spin if care were not taken. As the chaos unfolded, the engineers soon went to work, utilizing Peregrine's control thruster to counterbalance the escape of propellant. Their actions were able to stabilize the spacecraft, allowing an alignment with the sun for recharge. Um, then we made a, a challenge to a landing on the moon. SLIM uh, has um, been communicating uh, to the Earth uh, uh, station and it is um, receiving command from um, the Earth. But Peregrine had already lost too much fuel to have a safe landing on the moon, and a successful mission needed to be in view. However, Astrobotic did not let the flight end quickly and without control, thus prolonging the mission beyond what everyone thought possible. As the pressure in the damaged tanks decreased, the fuel leak decreased alongside, and this extended the lander's operations. By January 9, there was an estimated 40 hours fuel left in the lander, and three days after, landers only got better with increasing hours. By January 15, the leak was almost entirely resolved, allowing the lander to continue its trajectory to the moon and to ascend to a distance of up to 242,000 miles away from the Earth by January 13. The initial plan of the mission was for Peregrine to have a space circle back toward Earth before heading to the moon. But this plan was soon changed on January 14 with the decision to minimize space debris. The lander was quickly allowed to burn up in Earth's atmosphere. According to later elementary data from Peregrine, the lander finally broke apart on January 18 in the sky above the South Pacific Ocean at about 1,500 miles off the eastern coast in Australia. This only goes to show the importance of SLIM. Sea of Nectar, uh, Sarah, and uh, what we know is that this spacecraft called SLIM, which is short for the Smart Lander for Investigating the Moon. While amidst the numerous failed missions to space, SLIM stood as a ray of hope as it did not fail as people thought it would. Most times, when a spacecraft loses an engine mid-flight, it stands a high chance of either crashing or having an emergency landing. Shower, the case was different for SLIM. Despite losing its nozzle, SLIM still managed to have a soft landing, but also did so on target. Through SLIM, 
Japan has achieved a higher status in space technology, and this was all thanks to the intelligence, high skills, and dedication of JAXA, which not only helped them accomplish SLIM's mind-blowing feat, but also set a benchmark for the future. You see, before SLIM, the success of space missions had been very narrow. For example, since NASA's successful moon landing 59 years ago, only China has accomplished the feat of a successful moon landing in the 21st century with the Chang'e 3. The question here is, why are there so few successes in space explorations? The answer is simple, and Michio Kaku explains that space exploration is evolving. Another moon base or Mars base, another branch of humanity, because he's seen what happens when meteors and asteroids hit the Earth. It's not pleasant. The 20th century saw what was regarded as a space race between two strong powers of the world, which included the U.S. and Russia. The competition between these nations has been beneficial for growth in space exploration, warranting heavy investment by NASA alongside the U.S. government. Today, things are different, as there is nothing like a space race anymore. As a result, space exploration is no longer driven out of competition, but as a result of cheer curiosity, and recognition. So how does this affect space missions? Less competitiveness only means less funding, and less funding means that cheaper materials are now being used to build space technology. Because space tech is also now being developed by private companies, the quality of space equipment is also lower, which adds to the failure of most lunar landers. Apart from poor investment in space technology, there is also the problem of the moon's atmosphere which has also aided the failure of landers. The atmosphere of the moon is not so friendly to communications as it interferes with radio signals, which mainly disrupts landing on targeted locations. Also, due to the complex atmosphere of the moon, parachutes are said not to work as effectively as they do on Earth, causing the spacecraft to depend solely on its engines. Thus, the heavier a probe is, the more likely it is to crash. So with the recent failure of the space mission to the moon, how can the issues of landing failures be addressed? Here, Japan's SLIM mission pops up as an answer, providing a promising solution and hope for the future. Through SLIM, JAXA, in collaboration with NASA, brings to the fore an innovative guidance system that paves the way for future successful missions. With the solution presented by the SLIM mission, we can rest assured that the future of lunar explorations like the Artemis program have a chance of success. This program was created solely to facilitate humans' return to the moon. Already, two test missions have been carried out, and Artemis 3 is set to take off soon. But while SLIM was an immense success, providing the solution to a soft landing on the moon, it still presents a problem that leaves scientists perturbed. As you know, SLIM landed in a different way than it was designed to. Instead, the analysis showed that it landed face down despite its design for an upright landing. As of now, the reason for this is still unknown, and scientists are still trying to find answers to the mystery. According to Michio Kaku, until the reason for this erroneous landing of SLIM is discovered and resolved, there is still a great possibility that future moon exploration will be endangered. Here, Scientists need to understand the problem underneath SLIM's wrong landing, as this would be defining for the future. But here, the mysteries remain, and JAXA alongside NASA continues to unravel, knowing its importance for the future. Indeed, unraveling the mystery of this event promises many things, including safer space exploration. Though it almost failed, analysis on the makeup of SLIM showed it wasn't meant to fail. Created for precise land, it features specialized legs with crumble zones like a car, which are part of its arsenal for safety features made to facilitate soft land, even when the aircraft is at high speed. Initially, SLIM was also designed to land on a spot located within the Scioli crater, with a slope of about 15 degrees. For a smooth landing, the SLIM spacecraft had shorter back legs than the front. Before it touched down, it was programmed to execute an exact 45-degree flip to reduce landing impact. SLIM also featured two Mitsubishi engines and 12 attitude control thrusters found in lunar probes for soft land. These features were crucial to the probe's role in aiding descent speed and maneuvering during landing. 
The aircraft landing thruster, divided into two, included another landing thruster and a more miniature thruster, which could help the adjustment of the spacecraft tilted. In addition to this, there are five crushable aluminum lattice landing legs meant to supply a cushion for the final impact of the landing process. So despite all these features displayed by SLIM, it perplexed scientists even more when it landed face down. Because of the turnaround of events, numerous speculations were soon birthed. According to some, SLIM's wrong landing might have been a result of some forces behind it, and some people even go as far as suggesting some external forces beyond our control. Some have even insisted that aliens may be responsible for SLIM's awkward landing, which continues to puzzle scientists. However, we must note that the issue of extraterrestrial life being accountable for the SLIM problem still needs evidence. At the same time, scientists have yet to unravel the truth, and an even more shocking discovery confronts the world with a mind-blowing discovery of Japan on the moon's surface. What did Japan discover on the moon? Now, while Japan's SLIM mission took the world by storm based on its achievements, you would never believe what they discovered on the moon. Recently, the renowned physicist Michio Kaku was looking through the display images obtained from the mission in his lab, and he found something hard to believe, leaving everyone shocked. From what the photos revealed, Kaku was able to map out strange structures on the moon's surface, which was like nothing ever seen. These structures included tall towers reaching the sky and shining in a complex pattern. The question is, where did these structures come from, and who built them? Did life ever thrive on the moon? Are the structures a remnant of a lost civilization, or shocking evidence of an extraterrestrial life? As these questions arose, Michio Kaku was sure that this was only the beginning of unraveling mysteries on the moon, which might not only include life on the moon, but also a treasure trove of mineral resources. But how far can Japan go? Indeed, taking a look at the new solutions that SLIM brings to the table, it is clear that the future of space exploration is bright for Japan, especially when we consider its new methods of space exploration in comparison to the past lunar missions like the Apollo missions in the 1960s and 70s. According to Michio Kaku, SLIM has so far proven to be a more cost-effective method of lunar exploration. While past explorations were mainly done with human-crewed spacecraft or lunar landers, SLIM utilizes an independent navigation and landing system aided precision. Again, since unmanned missions are naturally safer, SLIM is more safe. Using his advanced guide and control system also makes things better. While the Apollo mission made use of manual piloting and navigation technology, SLIM's precise landing and deployment of sophisticated instruments and rovers enabled comprehensive investigation of the lunar surface during missions. This advancement of SLIM space exploration, however, does not stand on its own, but complements past missions. Instead of studying the surface of the moon, SLIM is equipped with in-depth capacity to examine the makeup, layout, and features of the moon, thus creating a higher dimension of what was previously known about how the moon was formed as well as how it has evolved. SLIM's success is born out of the collaboration of JAXA and Space Agency, which has proven to be result-oriented as it helps achieve exploration goals. This way, discoveries are made faster, forming the foundation for future collaborations. When talking about future cooperation for significant events, the NASA Artemis program comes to mind, with Japan promising to be an invaluable partner and aid the project with instruments and logistics support. SLIM's success is indeed an excellent example of the importance of international cooperation in solving complex problems and attaining potential success in space exploration. Here, cooperation helps to split the cost, take joint risks, and achieve results more quickly. Japan, on the other hand, would benefit from these collaborations, as it would be able to access expertise and resources to pursue its goals. Recently, space agencies and private companies have also proven to be great collaboration options. As a result, JAXA has recently been partnering with agencies like SpaceX, enabling more explosive strides in its space explorations and promising a more exciting future. What do you think about JAXA's accomplishments? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below.